From National Public Radio, I'm Martin Goldsmith, and this is Performance Today. People in my age group are turning away from popular music in droves. We don't like what we hear. We're looking for something else. We're looking for an alternative. Let's hear some of this classical stuff. Maybe played by somebody new. You know? Seiji Ozawa Hall is a big leap from Cold Spring Harbor, but Billy Joel is not the stranger to classical music that you might think. This hour we'll hear Billy Joel take his uptown pop sensibilities into one of the great classical music centers of the country, Tanglewood. We'll hear the world premiere of Joel's new solo piano work and check out a sonata that was an early flop for one of Billy Joel's classical heroes, a piano man named Beethoven. It's all just ahead on Performance Today. As Billy Joel ventures from pop into classical music, he's not without a role model. George Gershwin had supreme success on Broadway and in the concert hall. Here's American composer and pianist William Bolcom with Gershwin's Rialto Ripples and piano playing Jazz Bo Brown.
William Bolcom with George Gershwin's piano playing Jazz Bow Brown. And before that, Rialto Ripples from an Electra Nonsuch CD. Later this hour, we'll hear from another piano man, Billy Joel. I'm Martin Goldsmith with NPR's performance today for Monday, October 13th. A study to be released this week by the National Endowment for the Arts says support for American arts activity will continue to lag far behind its growth. And as a result, says the study, the arts will remain economically and politically vulnerable. Today's New York Times quotes the study as saying these conditions will continue so long as arts patrons are perceived as being older, wealthier, better educated, and whiter than a typical cross-section of the American public. Other factors cited by the study include the commercialization of American culture and a decline in public school arts education. When Billy Joel appeared at Tanglewood nine days ago, and we'll have that performance for you later this hour, he said that he never thought about making a hit single. He focuses on creating an album. One particular song may become wildly popular, say Piano Man or New York State of Mind, but for every one of those, there are several other compelling tunes that get neglected. A similar dynamic was at work with one of Billy Joel's favorite composers, Ludwig van Beethoven. Beethoven's Piano Sonata Number no. 22 in F is a wonderfully brilliant, concise work that had the misfortune to be published between two monster hits, the Waldstein and Appassionata Sonatas. We're going to hear pianist Robert Taub play the Sonata Number no. 22. This performance is from Taub's acclaimed series of recitals at Princeton University. This is Beethoven's Piano Sonata Number no. 22. Thank you. 
the piano sonata number 22 in F major by Beethoven. Pianist Robert Taub gave that performance as part of his complete survey of all 32 Beethoven piano sonatas at Princeton University's Institute for Advanced Studies. Our thanks to Jim Moses Audio Recordings. Well, stay with us. Coming up in just a moment, a visit with new classical piano man, Billy Joel. Support for WNYC is provided by the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, where Edgar Meyer, Bela Fleck, and Mike Marshall will give the New York concert debut of their new CD, a blend of bluegrass, jazz, and classical music. In concert tomorrow at 8 at Alice Tully Hall. Tickets are available through Center Charge, 212-721-6500. 821, Classic New York, WNYC, 93.9 FM. More of performance today. And evening music coming up at 9 o'clock, 9.05 to be exact, just after the Writer's Almanac with Garrison Keeler. More of the classical Piano Man in a moment. WMYC is supported by the Brooklyn Academy of Music's Next Wave Festival, October 14th through 19th. The Merce Cunningham Dance Company performs three world premieres featuring the work of Cunningham, Cage, Rauschenberg, and Kawakubo, among others. For information on Merce Cunningham at BAM, 718-636-4100. Performance today is supported by NPR member stations and National Public Radio. Contributors include Borders, Books, and Music, celebrating the arts by supporting cultural programming on NPR 800. Well, Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492. Billy Joel discovered classical music, well, years ago, but his discovery really developed in 1997. Nine days ago, the pop star who wrote Piano Man, Just the Way You Are, Uptown Girl, and many other hits, visited a cradle of American classical music, the Tanglewood Music Center in the Berkshire Hills of western Massachusetts. And for the first time, the public got to hear what Billy Joel has been talking about for weeks in People Magazine, the New York Times, the Dave Letterman Show, is moved to the classical end of the music spectrum. At 9 o'clock on this Saturday, Joel was at Seiji Ozawa Hall for a one-man show called Questions, Answers, and a Little Music. And the highlight was the unveiling of his first classical compositions. Speaking on stage with me before the show, Billy Joel explained that he's actually lived with classical music his whole life and studied the piano for 11 years before switching to rock and roll. Even with his new classical concentration, that rock and roll sensibility is never very far away. I probably retain a sense of slam-bang crash. I like that stuff. I... I... I still do, uh, from rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And I haven't walked away from rock and roll. I'm just concentrating on writing in orchestral and piano pieces. So I, I haven't, you know, just stopped sure. entirely. I'm just, this is where my interest is right now. Mm -hmm. um, what I brought into my popular music and the songs I wrote was a sense of how to build a piece, of how to compose a piece, of what is good harmony, of what is good counterpoint, how to juxtapose melody and chord, uh, those are all things you learn from classical music. Mm -hmm. You and uh, Paul McCartney and Elvis Costello are among a certain generation of rock musicians who've embraced classical music. I I'm wondering, is it a generational thing that's, that's caused you to turn away temporarily from the three and four and five minute relatively simple styles of, of pop music to find satisfaction in this relatively more complex form is it a generational thing, or is it just the right time for you? Well, I'm in my late 40s now, and I'm finding song form to be confining. I think anything I write will have some song sensibility to it, will have a singability to it. There will be some sort of melody that is suffused with the possibility of it being sung. I can't get away from that, because that's really where my heart is. But I'm finding... Uh, song form, verse, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, verse, chorus. Um, a little confining. And I also find that you, you really can't elaborate, you can't develop a theme, a motif in songwriting without kind of killing the song. You, you have to kind of repeat over and over again. And lyrics 
helped that a great deal. Um, I just found myself getting to a point where I want to say more with the music. I've become a better musician as I've be gotten older. I've become a better writer as I've gotten older, hopefully. And um, I have to expand on that. You know, Billy, a cynic might ask, uh, Bobola, why are you leaving a 50,000-person stadium act and, and instead uh, embracing a, an entertainment form which appeals to much fewer people? Uh, he might say, you know, in Philadelphia, uh, they don't play classical music on the radio anymore. Uh, you're, you're, you're climbing on a sinking ship, Billy. What would you say to that? Well, I don't think that ship should sink. I think that there's a lot of people in my age group who are just beginning to discover classical music. There are people in my age group who are turning away from popular music and rock and roll in droves. They don't like what they hear anymore, and they're looking for alternatives. I'm moving away from the stadiums. Actually, I'm doing another tour with Elton John next year, so I'm still doing a whole long tour where we're playing huge outdoor stadiums. But because I've done it, I've already been there, I've done that. Been there, done that. You can't get any bigger. I mean, what's bigger than that? Um, I will only play in the middle of a state and charge everybody a buck. You know, as they drive through on the throughway, <laughs> you can't do that. So I'd like to get back to uh, my music being heard in a different way. Are you at all nervous about playing Tanglewood? I mean, the, the home of Leonard Bernstein and Aaron Copeland and uh, Serge Kusevitsky, is, is this a, a special gig for you? Well, I'm not nervous because I'm not really going to be playing the classical music. Right. I uh, brought a, a woman who actually went to Tanglewood uh, on a keyboard fellowship that I sponsor here. Her name is Yulia Gorman, and she's going to be playing, so maybe she's nervous. <laughs> but I, I have some trepidations about introducing this work. It's never been heard before, these piano pieces. And I'm going to try to hopefully, not that I'm going to present them as, with a disclaimer, but I don't want people to think that I think this is the ultimate thing I can do. I'm just beginning. Uh, no one ever heard my first rock and roll songs. No, no one ever heard my first attempts at pop music. Uh, it took me a long time to get to a point where a lot of people heard me. Now I'm in a situation where a lot of people are going to be listening to me, and I'm just starting to write this other mm -hmm. kind of music. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Joel. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope no one is under the uh, impression that there's going to be a concert here. I will be playing some music, uh, and I will, you know, be going to the piano to uh, uh, you know, make reference to how the pieces got written. Um, but I have all this information about what I do, uh, what this life that I've had in music um, that you may be curious about, or you may want to know about, or then uh, young people who are interested in going into that particular field. And I, want, I like to be able to help them. So um, I took piano lessons for 11 years. And um, I kind of messed around when I should have been practicing. Like, my mother knew classical music. My parents met at a, at a Gilbert and Sullivan production at CCNY in the late 30s. My father came uh, from Germany in the 30s, and uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, and he, he, they couldn't, they, he couldn't get into the States, so he went to Cuba. And he stayed in Cuba, and he, he said he loved those Cuban women. Uh, he had a great time down there. But then he, he went to the States, and he met my mom. And uh, so he was a classically trained pianist, and he was you know, really good on the piano. He met my mom at, at the Mikado. They were doing the Mikado. You know the Mikado. And I love Gilbert and Sullivan. I think those guys were great. I don't think they're really given enough credit, actually. Gilbert and Sullivan, fantastic stuff. And, um, but my mom would be in the, in the, in the kitchen while I was, I, would, I grew up in a Levitt house. You know Levitt Town, okay? Uh, okay, there's a Levitt house, there's this little tiny little house, and the, the piano, the room that the piano was, it was called, it was a Lester Upright. And it was this, this, you know, this, the only thing my parents could afford. So I had to pl play this piano. My mom would be in the next room, I'm supposed to be practicing, so I'll, I'll give you an example. 
Okay, Bill, any time to practice? It's like, I want to go out and play baseball. You know, I want to play stoop ball, handball, right? Stick ball, whatever. So I had to learn, say, uh, say the given piece was the Mozart Sonata in C. Everybody knows this. Obviously, I didn't practice it enough. So, um, so I got sick of the dots. I was like, ah, you know, I, I love Mozart. But can I get the album, you know, listen to the record? So I would, like, my mom knew it was a Mozart piece, but she didn't know that the sonata in C was this one. So I'd be practicing, and she was listening, and she knew Mozart's style, so I would have to, you know, if I was going to fake some, I'd have to fake it in Mozart's style, so I'd go. that one really fast. So, oh, this one's easy, Mom. <laughs> and the problem was the next day, I didn't remember what I played the day before because it wasn't on the, the sheet music. I knew it was kind of that rhythm. Uh... What's that? I said, ah, oh, that's the second movement. <laughs> the third day, I don't remember anything. I'm... That's really good. I said, this one's easy. Now, the end of the week would come when I go to the piano teacher who would be waiting for me to play the Mozart sonata in C, and I wouldn't have practiced it at all, and I'd come in and be going. <laughs> and she'd go, you're a waste of time, you're wasting your mother's money, it's, you stink, you'll never be anything, and I said, what about all that stuff I wrote? Nobody ever heard it, you know? And that's really when I started writing. I started writing, and I started making up my own stuff. And I was really having a blast. And I kind of set the keys on fire with lighter fluid sometimes. And, you know, <laughs> you know, and I make the room, I turn all the lights out. You know, it's like Jimi Hendrix, you know, like. I mean, if Mozart had lighter fluid, I think he would have used it. What I want to point out is that what I'm doing now is really just an extension or, or an, a natural evolution from what I've done in the first place. I'd, I'd like to bring Yulia out. Yulia, come here, sit at the grand piano. I'm going to play this stupid thing here. Well, I shouldn't say stupid. They give it to me for free. So this wonderful instrument. I write the music first. It doesn't have any lyrics in it. It's just music. It's just pure music. And I'm writing it on a piano. And I would say about half of the music that I've written, that you heard on recorded albums, was originally conceived as piano pieces, purely instrumental pieces. And then the job was, if I was going to write lyrics, I got to figure out, I got to break the emotional code. What's in this music? Why did I write this music? What does this music say? This is before videos, when, you know, we all had to wear garter belts like Marv Albert, you know what I mean? It's like, well, oh, come on, you know, he was going to get shot. Um, I got to figure out what, what, what is this music saying? What's the emotion? What's inherent in this music? So I'm going to give you an example of a song, which it ended up being, you'll hear the recording, I'm going to play the original idea I had. The way that I originally played, I'm going to probably screw it up playing it. Okay, so now you know it as play the, the thing.
that's how it came out. But it was essentially a piece that could have been a classical piece with an Alberti bass. And I arranged it in the key of E because uh, I wanted it to be like a tribute to the Four Seasons. Remember the Four Seasons? Sherry, baby. Frankie Valley sings like somebody's got him by the... <laughs> so it has to be in a key that I can just barely reach. Uptown girl, even living it. Now, Yulia took it and put it into the romantic gear. Just play a little bit of the thing that you get from Cucar. flexible thing. It can be done a lot of different ways. It doesn't always mean it's the right way to do it. I mean, I've heard my stuff done in elevators. And um, I'm always trying to picture the recording session. You know, like... Got a call from an old friend we used to be real. I was doing him as like early McCartney, you know? And uh, yeah, I hear it on this elevator done like by... A Herb Alpert and a Tijuana Brass wannabe group. <laughs> like a quiz show. Come on down! And I'm thinking, that's my son! That's my baby! That's my baby! And it was, you know, they gutted the thing, but I still dug it. I don't know if it's the person. Anyway, so, so there, are, there are good arrangements of things that are bearing, but it's essentially, you know, music is is a malleable thing and it can be done in different ways. So the new stuff I've been writing is essentially the same process by which I've written popular music, by which I've written songs in the rock and roll genre. But I just, instead of putting the words on, I didn't write words. And this piece that uh, Yulia's gonna play for you, which is a, a world premiere of this stuff, uh, as I got all the jitters about, uh, just so I can explain it, the genre that I'm writing in is not 1997. This is not uh, state-of-the-art, late 20th century atonal modern music. I'm writing music that is more like 1897. So I'm starting there. That's what I'm starting. That's my, my, my starting point where I don't know if I'm going to end up there, but it's the music that I feel a kinship to, that I feel the closest to. The music of composers like Schumann and, and Chopin and um, uh, the, late, the late romantics. Um, so this is a piece uh, that Yulia is going to play called uh, Reverie. So once again, Yulia Gorman.
give you a classical album, don't he? <laughs> well, I don't know if can play. Anyway, so um, before, Yulia, before you go too far away, I, I want to point out, um, I'd like to explain, I don't know what you've read about what I'm doing, and sometimes it's been misinterpreted, uh, what I've said, what I'm doing. It I doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm leaving popular music or songwriting for the rest of my life, but I went into it. I, I wanted to be in this music. I loved rock and roll. It was like some girl with, you know, fishnet stockings and just like rabbits that ran away and was like, okay, I love you, you know. And we had this flaming affair for like 30 years. And it was great. And she was great. And then I went, wait a minute, I want something else now. Uh, it wasn't meant to last forever. Um, what I meant was, I have an empathy and I, I, I of a simpatico for people who are on the outside of things. When I was first sending my tapes around, I got turned down by everybody. Nobody wanted to know from me. I was this rock and roll guy, long, oh, one of these long haired guys, you know, he wants to be a rock star. That really wasn't what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a good musician. But I related to this kind of music and I wanted to bring a musicality into it. Nowadays, what you have is at the top of the heap, the people generating this huge income, which drives the music industry, is all rock and roll, pop music, rap, alternative. It's pop music. Classical music is, tells about, you know, if you sell like 5,000 albums in classical music, they sold 5,000 albums, you know? In the rock and roll, was, he sold what? Like, it shipped coal, you know? Uh, it, it shipped lead. This, it's staggering how different the numbers are, and I, my brother is, is, is a good example. He dedicated his entire life to learning this music and, and, and how to sight read and how to, how to, how to conduct and, and how to know this craft and this art, and he can't get arrested. Record companies, they don't want to sign these people. They, 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 they keep these young people out. They don't want them in. They don't want them competing with them. It was the same thing. When I was younger, the, the, the old guard, they don't want to let you in. They don't want to let you in. It's like athletes. The guy who's, who's been on the team for 10 or 15 years, he don't want that rookie in. This rookie's going to take his job away. But that's the natural order of things. The young guy's always going to come in. The young, young people, young women, young men. They're, they, they, you got to let them in. They're going to come in. What I'm doing when I'm writing this music is I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking about these other musicians. I'm not saying I can ever compare myself to a composer like Rachmaninoff or Beethoven, people I idolize. But I want to write music that other people can play that lets new people in. And I may get creamed by critics for what I'm writing. They go, oh, yeah. oh, it sounds just like Rachmaninoff. It sounds like uh, Chopin or, or it's all the cliches or whatever it is. I don't care. Uh, you got to take a chance. You got to stick your neck out. Um, People in my age group are turning away from popular music in droves. We don't like what we hear. We're looking for something else. We're looking for an alternative. Let's hear some of this classical stuff. Maybe played by somebody new, you know? If my silence 
made you leave And that would be my worst mistake So I will share this room with you You can have this heart to break Writing good music is difficult, no matter what genre you're in. Writing good rock and roll music was not easy. Writing good jazz music was not easy. Writing good uh, popular music or Broadway show music um, or folk music, it's not easy. And I think all musicians, whether they're from the classical world, the folk world, the jazz world, the pop, will appreciate a well-written piece of music no matter what other genre it's in. We can all point to it and go, now that's a good piece of music. But it all should have the same ultimate impact, it should move you. It should bring you into the mind of the person who wrote this stuff. Billy Joel, I have uh, admired your work for the longest time, and I've wanted to meet you for the longest time, and it's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Billy Joel, talking with me, and to a capacity crowd at Seiji Ozawa Hall at the Tanglewood Music Center in Lenox, Massachusetts. It's from a show he did at Tanglewood on the 4th of this month. A benefit performance for the Berkshire Theatre Festival that featured the premiere of two of his new classical works, Soliloquy and Reverie, played by pianist Yulia Gorenman. As he said uh, during the show, Billy Joel hasn't abandoned pop music. Tomorrow, his complete hits collection, 1973 to 1997, goes on sale. And early next year, he hits the road with Elton John for a multinational tour. Pianist Julia Gorenman, who met Billy Joel when he sponsored her studies at Tanglewood a couple of summers ago, is pretty busy, too. After the performance at Tanglewood, Julia hustled back to Baltimore to play a couple of performances with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra of the Piano Concerto No. 2 by Sergei Rachmaninoff, one of Billy Joel's idols. Our Billy Joel Tanglewood taping was produced by Benjamin Rowe and Mark Mobley with post-production and editing by Kerry Thompson. The show was recorded by NPR's Kirill Wheeler, along with Tim Martin and Virginia Reed of Classic Sound. Performance Today is supported by NPR member stations and NPR. Contributors include the Robert W. Woodruff Foundation for coverage of the arts in Atlanta. To uh, close the hour, let's go back up to Tanglewood and a Billy Joe performance, one of his greatest hits, Piano Man. And they sit at the bar! Put bread in my jar and say, man, what are you doing here? La, 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 di, di, da. La, la, di, di, da. Da, da. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody. You've got us feeling all right.
Billy Joel at Tanglewood. I'm Martin Goldsmith, and this is NPR's Performance Today.